Hope Church family. This is the last of our lessons out of Unit 3 of our Faith Pathway Study Manual. And this is Lesson 13 for November the 25th, 2018. It's entitled, Amassing Wealth. And our devotional reading is Psalms number 46. Our background scripture is Genesis 30. And our printed passage is Genesis 30, verses 22 through 32, and concluding with verse 43. Our key verse is, God remembered Rachel, he listened to her, and enabled her to conceive. Our lesson's aims are, study how God provided for Jacob and his family, identify with Jacob's stormy relationship with his father-in-law, and pray for God's intervention in our own times of crisis. Our lesson for uh, this Sunday has uh, many uh, different emphasis and different uh, takeaways for us to gather uh, once we begin to indulge in the presence of God the promise of God, and the fulfillment of God's word and promises to Jacob and Rachel and the family. Uh, when we look at the very uh, beginning of one of our lessons aims uh, to study how God provided for Jacob and his family, uh, our lesson starts off in verse 22. And it is the fulfillment of a promise. It's the fulfillment of a provision uh, made from God to Rachel. And throughout our lesson, uh, there will be many different uh, social and uh, customary and traditional man-made practices that will unfold themselves as we encounter the different verses in our lesson. But it starts off uh, by saying that in verse 22, that God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. Now, we realize that... Uh, we serve a God that never sleeps nor slumbers. Uh, we recognize that uh, we always say that God is all-knowing. Uh, he knows the end before the beginning. And we recognize that through the English dialect uh, and also through the practice of anthropomorphizing uh, the personalization of uh, identifying God who is a spirit but uh, recognizing God in a personal embodiment uh, as ourselves to help us to relate the intervention of God in the affairs of humankind by recognizing God as such. So when we uh, read through the scripture and it said that God remembered, uh, we use a language which we are familiar with uh, and have been uh, brought up on in this society. Uh, to express the lessons and the enormous richness of God's word and to make it viable unto us so that we 
can connect the dots. But we know that God doesn't forget, nor does God have to remember. Now, many of us uh, forget things uh, within uh, a few minutes, but God never forgets. And so, but we realize here that in uh, this scenario between Rachel, Rachel and Leah, that uh, Jacob, when he approached uh, Laban for his daughter, his first choice was, of course, Rachel. But Laban actually uh, instituted a certain customary practice. It's unfortunate, but he emphasized or he, he instituted a practice of bargaining. Uh, he utilized his daughters as a barter tool. And bartering is an exchange of goods, trade, or service for a item. And so uh, it's unfortunate, but still in many parts of the world today, women are used as a bartering tool. Uh, and it's uh, very unfortunate that we still have that mindset but during the biblical times, as we read through the Old Testament, even into the New Testament, we recognize that uh, women were subjected to second-class citizenship. Uh, women were only viewed uh, for their ability to reproduce. And if a woman did not... Uh, was unable to bear children, her worth was not viewed as being equal to those who could bear children. And uh, many times uh, there were different, uh, shall we say, levels of appreciation that were attached to women that made them more valuable one was is that if a woman was able to bear children, and then even with that, specifically, if uh, as though she had a choice in the uh, outpouring or in the birth or the gender of the child who was brought into uh, life from her womb, as though she had a choice in this process. But uh, even the gender of the child, if she bore sons over daughters, uh, she was even more appreciated. And of course, then the other thing that made her so valuable to a father who utilized his own offspring that was female, was if she was pure, if she was still a virgin. And so these were things that were used in biblical times and still used today uh, to somehow attach a value uh, to the female. Now, uh, it's somehow strange that the true enormous embodiment of the woman could be reduced to her being still pure and a virgin and her ability to bear children. Uh, if we read... The 31st Psalms, where the woman is actually given instruction to her son who was to become king. Uh, in the 31st Psalms, where we read a virtuous woman, 
we will find that there are many different attributes and characteristics that are attached to the woman other than just her ability to bear children and to remain clean or to remain pure. So although these become like um, different uh, attachments that the world has relegated women to, uh, just read Proverbs 31 uh, to raise our consciousness on the value uh, the virtuous woman. Now, when we uh, read here, we find that Rachel uh, is, she is actually uh, thanking God because God has removed from her not being able to bear children. And uh, the scripture in verse 23 says that God takes away my disgrace. So women recognize that if they were unable to bear children, that um, they were somewhat uh, ostracized, uh, they were mistreated uh, in, the, uh, in the society among the peopling, regardless if they were Related or not, even their relatives and friends had certain disdain for women because of the fact that uh, they were not able to bear children. And so this created uh, discourse between Leah, her sister, and Rachel. Now, uh, we re realize that Laban, the father, he used his children, uh, his daughters, to gain wealth. And he, as we read and understand in Scripture uh, prior to our lesson today, that uh, Laban made a somewhat of a contractual agreement with Jacob that he could have his daughters if he worked if he worked seven years for each daughter. So he had to provide labor uh, in a contractual agreement with Laban just so that he could marry the woman of his choice. Now, uh, throughout our lesson, we will see the intervention of the ways of man, not the ways of God, but the ways of man, the practices of man. We will see the, uh, the desires of man uh, all being interwoven into deceit and mischief and manipulation uh, in the course of God's blessing. And what we can gather from this is absent from man's own uh, deceitful ways that God's promise still is fulfilled. What God intends is not offset or it's not delayed or it's not removed or it's not undone because of the practices, the deceit, the lying, the trickery, the mischief, the manipulation of man. Uh, man heaps upon himself these uh, obstacles and blockages and things that impede or or cause uh, confusion and cause uh, uh, problems in our lives, but it does not in any way alter or in any way does it de delay or, or offset any of the fulfillment and promises of God. All it does is make life difficult for us, but it does not in any way does it do anything to the plans of God? 
Well, there's a song that we sing, and it says, <clears throat> What is, not what is, but what God has for me, it is for me. And another song that we sing, uh, uh, an old hymn, when we say we're standing on the promises of God. Now, after Rachel had conceived and bore the son whose name she called Joseph, uh, and uh, in the translation, the translation of the Hebrew uh, name, and we say Joseph, but there's no J in the Hebrew alphabet. So actually it is Yosef, but it meant to take away or to add. And uh, the commentary in our lesson uh, says that it added to uh, Rachel and Jacob's wealth. It also took away the shame and reproach and disgrace that Rachel was encountering because she uh, had gone through a period of time where she was unable to bear children. But after Joseph was born, now, Jacob already had 10 other sons at this time. But once Joseph was born, Jacob now, uh, the wife uh, who was the love of his life, whom he really uh, wanted to marry first, but Laban uh, tricked him into utilizing Jacob's skill and making him work for a woman, Leah, uh, who was not of his choosing. But during this course, once Joseph is born, Jacob decides that now he should move away and he should actually now start working for the wealth of his own family. That he should not allow somebody else to benefit from his labor that he should not be increasing the wealth and the uh, financial status of another man's family, but he should actually be establishing his own wealth for his own family and establishing the financial status of his own offspring and not that of someone else. And... Uh, sometimes uh, when new birth is uh, practiced, when we receive a child uh, in the relationship between a man and a woman, um, uh, sometimes when this is done, it brings about a new mindset. Uh, it brings about uh, another uh, uh, presence of responsibility. We begin to look at things differently and we start uh, deciding and, and we start making decisions based upon what is it that we want to bring to this new life that we together have uh, uh, actually uh, brought into existence. And so uh, then we start rethinking uh maybe different life uh, aspirations that we previously have thought about or, or talked about or decided upon. But when new life comes in, we begin to then focus on, okay, uh, now is a, a time for us to redirect our thoughts and our aspirations and our plans. And this caused Jacob to uh, approach Laban and to uh, now tell him that, uh, okay, I have been working for you and you realize that uh, while I've been working for you, I've increased all of your wealth. Uh, just look at how much you've gained uh, from my years of toiling and laboring for you. But now that I have my own son, um, 
uh, from Rachel, I'm sure that you recognize and understand that just as you have accumulated all of this wealth uh, by the work of my own hands, that I need to do the same for mine. And so uh, as he approaches Laban, well then from uh, verses 25 to 30, uh, we recognize that uh, Laban is not willing to allow this uh, gift that he has experienced. And, and in the uh, scripture, uh, verses 27, where it says that uh, he learned by experience. Uh, later in our scripture, uh, we find, I believe it's in the 30, uh, 31st chapter of Genesis, but we find that uh, uh, Laban actually uh, has some uh, different uh, religious rituals uh, that he indulges himself in. Uh, Laban actually uh, uses enchantments and uh, other forms of worship uh, to try to uh, get some kind of uh, uh, inside or insight into the actions of others. And he used this practice uh, with Jacob. Uh, Jacob uh, lets him know that you don't have to look into any crystal ball all you have to do is just look out among your fields and you can see uh, what my works have produced for you. So Jacob lets him know that uh, recognize what, what I have done. Look at how all of your riches has been multiplied. Uh, but now I want to leave and I want to do the same thing I've done for you. I want to do that for my own household. And, uh, of course, those who manipulate others for their own self-worth. Laban, of course, uh, had been living off of the fat of Jacob's work and did not want for that to leave. He wanted to continue this practice. As many who are greedy, uh, they see the works they see the skill level of certain individuals uh, and they recognize that uh, they have a gift, uh, that they are good at what they do. And the gift that they have is profitable. Uh, it, uh, it, it actually is something that I can increase my wealth from. And once they begin to receive it, and year after year after year, they can continue to see their profit margins increase. That's not something that they willingly are um, in the, the that they willingly want to release. That they're like, well, you made me a lot of money, and uh, but I understand. I understand. You need to go and do for yourself. No they become attached to the greed. And uh, as we always say, uh, the greedy uh, have no discipline on their appetite. Uh, the more they get, the more they want. And it doesn't matter to them what type of discomfort it provides to the, those who are providing for them and increasing their wealth. It doesn't matter if it doesn't meet the dreams that you have established for yourself. It doesn't matter how it may be depriving your family of what they are justly do. Uh, none of that is of their concern. All that they are concerned about is the continuation of increasing their wealth. They don't care about the welfare of your spouse, your children, your lifestyle, as long as you just continue to make me wealthy, that's their number one concern. And when we look at this here, we recognize that uh, Jacob, uh, as he 
prepares how he is choosing to leave. Uh, he knows that uh, through this practice, and of course, uh, this was in uh, this was in an agricultural age, and so it was based on cattle and the yield of the field. But he realized, and during this time, uh, the way that uh, Jacob, now remember, uh, uh, Jacob has uh, a good skill set. Uh, he, he's gifted. He, he knows how to work, and uh, he uses his gift. But Jacob also, uh, he, he wasn't, uh, shall we say, uh, new to the game. Uh, Jacob also, he realized uh, the essentials of the practice he was in. And he knew that in the cattle, that the, uh, the sheep, the goats, um, the uh, livestock, he realized that those that were, uh, shall we say, uh, unspotted or speckled, if they were all white, if they were all brown, if they were all black, uh, they were viewed as being a uh, more valuable stock than those that were speckled or had blemishes or what have you. So Laban, all he wanted to do was to just attribute to uh, Jacob money. He asked him, well, uh, how much will uh, uh, I have to pay you? Name your wages. Uh, what do you want? Uh, I'll, I'll pay you to keep you here. Uh, but Jacob uh, told him, no, 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 no. Uh, you can't do what you've been doing to me. Uh, we're getting ready to change the contractual agreements here. Uh, that same old practice is not going to work this time. Uh, so he tells him, but, but Jacob realizes that uh, for Laban, I have to make him feel as though he's still gaining, that he's still, uh, he, he, he's on the better side of this agreement. So he tells him, what I will do here is, I will take all of the undesirables. Oh, and there's a lot to be said in this lesson about spotted and speckled and those with blemishes but he tells him you take all of the good of your stock and uh i'll take the ones that are undesirables i'll take the ones that are spotted i'll take the ones that are speckled uh i'll take those and you keep the pure ones and uh laban agreed to it until he realized that while Jacob was leaving, and we find this further and when we read into Genesis 31, that those that were the undesirables, uh, those that were not viewed as being as valuable as the ones that weren't spotted, they actually increased more than the ones that Laban agreed that, oh, that sounds like a sweet deal to me. I'm still getting the better of the bargain here. But actually, the, one, the ones that Jacob took, they actually increased more than the ones that Laban kept. And what we learn from this here is, is that we don't have to, uh, we don't have to, uh, see, see, the engagement here, it didn't take away Jacob's abilities. See, the whole manipulative form or practice here, the, the blessing that was given to Jacob, the, the promise that was to be fulfilled through Jacob all the way up until the Savior was presented as the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. See, see God's process, it, it could have been Jacob, it could have been somebody else, it could have been anybody, but the, the, the truth of the lesson is, is that God's promise was going to be fulfilled regardless of what personality 
or what gifts or talents were given to that personality. So when we look at it here, sometimes as we are working and being misused and unappreciated and, and taken advantage of, uh, we sometimes think or feel as though uh, no one recognizes what I'm doing. But God sees and knows everything. And the blessing was still fulfilled. So as we look at our lesson here, uh, nothing, J Jacob didn't lose any of the attributes that have been afforded to him. Uh, it didn't deprive Jacob. In fact, in the end, Jacob's wealth was actually increased over that of Laban. So we don't have to feel like that we have to be as manipulative as those who misuse our abilities and our God-given gifts and talents. Uh, continue to utilize what God has given us that we might serve others. Uh, we don't have to change and start becoming as deceitful and manipulative as those who misuse others. Because all of the wealth, the cattle on a thousand hills, belongs unto God. Uh, we hope that through our lesson, uh, there is something that has been lifted that would uh, enable us to be better stewards, to be better servants, to be better people unto God. And we pray God's blessings upon all of the hearers of his word and most certainly to those that are the doers. God bless you and God keep you.